Two students did the unthinkable to a teacher's sweet, innocent daughter, and now she has one lesson for them they'll never forget. This movie is amazing. Confessions is based on the amazing debut book by Kanai Minato, with the film adaption directed by Tetsuya Nakashima, who also directed The World of Kanago, which we will talk about later. In Confessions, a teacher plans her own revenge against two students who kill her daughter, and we discover her brilliant, chaotic plan to systematically punish those students, knowing the government would give them a slap on the wrist due to Japan's penal code law against punishing people under 14. Do not mess with this teacher, Miss Yuko. Now this movie is confusing, but I'll do my best to tell you exactly what happens, but you're gonna need to lock in. With themes of motherhood and loneliness, we are in for a ride. So in this video, I'll explain the movie, talk about the themes, and the most craziest moments. And also, in honor of Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball, and our mascot, Gohan, aka Rice. Let's all cue the Gohan together, so repeat after me. If you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. Cue the Gohan! Look at these brats. These can't be teenagers, they don't look 30. These brats don't listen to their teacher, Miss Yuko. I had no idea it could be this bad. She said she'll be quitting teaching soon. You gotta be a really disliked teacher for kids to celebrate that in front of you. Damn, this school needs a national guard. Someone needs to call Sidney Poitier or Hilary Swank. These kids suck. The students talk over the teacher until she explains that her husband may have given her HIV. And now these brats treat her like Suge Knight with a needle. She continues the story of her life, raising her daughter away from the sick man who lied. A single woman raising a child all by herself as best she can. After daycare, her daughter would stay in the nurse's office until after school meetings were over. But one day, her daughter wasn't in the nurse's office. Also, it's February 13th when this happens, which happens to be my birthday. She and students look all over for her until they find her in the school swimming pool. This woman is telling her class about the tragic death of her daughter and they are laughing still. This detached mood is all she can do to cope. However, she knows that her daughter Manami's death was not an accident. The person who killed her is in this room. But in Japan, Article 41 of the Penal Code states that criminal acts of a person under 14 is not punishable. So the killer of Manami is in this room and they won't get punished if they are arrested. The teacher tells of a 13 year old who recently killed their family with cyanide and the media turned that student into like a hero. Some students in the room even have a tattoo dedicated to that cyanide killer. The cyanide killer returned to society while her chemistry teacher was arrested. Miss Yugo talks about her baby daddy, how his HIV became AIDS. Him grieving for his daughter is the first time he's held her. Miss Yuko believes that a part of her died along with Manami. She realizes that two students killed her daughter, student A and student B. Student A has good grades, but he harms animals and puts the photos on his website. He's also a science prodigy who is loved by everyone. His name is Shuya, but I'll just call him student A. Student A gave a doll toy to Miss Yuko's daughter Manami. When Miss Yuko shows student A the doll toy that he gave, it signifies she knows that he caused her death. He looks like he'll jump from the window in despair and guilt, but he laughs. Just kidding. He tells Miss Yuko about how he murdered Manami, her daughter, right in front of her. The science prodigy, inspired by the cyanide poisonings that eclipsed his popularity, decided to kill just for attention. On to student B. Student B is an unathletic student who only likes the video game. As punishment for failing grades, he has to clean the pool area for two weeks and he was involved in the death of Miss Yuko's daughter. 
When Miss Yuko went to talk to Student B's mom about his involvement, she didn't care at all that this woman lost her daughter. The only thing she cared about was the trouble her son would get into. Student A and Student B team up out of a shared interest in death and despair. They figured they would harm the teacher's daughter the youngest and weakest target. Both students give her a plushy purse, but it's been manipulated to shock whoever opens it. Manami is shocked by the electricity and passes out. Student B is terrified thinking she died, and he throws Manami into the pool to hide his involvement, unintentionally killing her by drowning. Student A had homicidal intent to kill, but wasn't able to. Student B was not homicidal, but killed after all. Miss Yuko wants the students to realize how precious life is and how awful their actions were. Before class, she poisoned their milk with HIV infected blood. The students are disgusted and surprised, and then she says, have a great spring break. Oh my gosh, guys, this is such an interesting plot so far. Before we move on, I want to say I'm getting heavy Life is Strange vibes from this movie. Eventually, Miss Yuko leaves the school, and the next semester, the students have a new homeroom teacher. Student B didn't come back to school, but surprisingly, Student A decided to come back. The class loves their new homeroom teacher, who lets them sing and dance in class. I'm not gonna front, they kinda ate. They kinda cooked and ate. This young girl named Mizuki joins the new homeroom teacher to visit student B to see when he will return to school. When his mother knocks on his door, he attacks her and screams like a wild trapped animal. He also compulsively cleans everything but himself. Other students begin to bully student A, calling him a murderer, throwing away his homework, and making a game out of terrorizing his entire life. Meanwhile, with student B, who refuses to come to school, his mother drugs him with sleeping pills just so that she can bathe him. He screams like a wild animal when he realizes. The new homeroom teacher is angry that students are bullying student A, but he can't know the reason why. Students start to bully Mizuki when they find out she hasn't started to bully student A with them. They force both of them to kiss thinking that'll spread the HIV. The students have turned against the killers, bullying them and telling them to die. Soon, student A learns that his HIV tests are negative, so he doesn't have HIV after drinking that blood. He and Mizuki become friends, discussing how Miss Yuko would never poison her students even if she hated them. And also, even if she did, it's not the best way to give someone HIV. Once he's back in school, he's terrifying his bullies with HIV blood. That's one way to get back at your bullies. Speaking of blood, student B's mom has to apologize to store owners when her idiot son vandalizes the place, but she finally learns from him that he's been infected with HIV. Student B then drops another bombshell. He says that before he threw Manami into the pool, she woke up and he still threw her in. When his mother learns of how doomed her son is, she gets a knife and creeps into his room, ready to end both of their lives. But Student B would somehow kill her before she would do the same to him. We learn about the relationship between student A and his mother. She was abusive after leaving her career to take care of her new son. Then she was divorced, leaving her son behind. Afterwards, he films a confession saying he hid a bomb in the school, which he will use to kill him and every other student. It becomes clear that all his antics to get attention stem from his desire to get recognized and loved by the mother who left him behind. Even more depressing, we learn why student B went and threw Manami into the pool after realizing she's still alive. He did it with a smile on his face to succeed where student A failed, killing someone. Student A failed to kill with a purse trap, yet still demeaned student B and called him useless, a failure, pointless. So student B went and threw her into the pool just to feel better than student A in some way. 
And even crazier, remember when Miss Yuko told the students she poisoned the killer's milk with HIV? Student A ran out in disgust like he's gonna vomit, but he only ended up laughing manically, knowing that his father would tell his mother that he contracted HIV, getting him attention from his mother. He was actually disappointed after learning he didn't contract HIV. Student B, plagued by an inferiority complex, killed his mom in a fit of anger to feel like he's not a failure. When he learns what student B did to his mother, student A executes that other student, Mizuki, the one person who was giving him attention, and then set up this whole bomb plot as the ultimate plan to find a mother's love. Before Mizuki's death, she flashbacks to a meeting with Miss Yuko. Miss Yuko's revenge never stopped with poisoning milk. She's the one who planned the bullying of students A and B, and expected the bullying to make the killer suicidal. Still, Miss Yuko says that she doesn't want them to die. She's trying to reform them, therefore saving herself from the darkness. She knows that revenge would get her nowhere, but obviously she feels conflicted about this. She never poisoned their milk, and even if she did, AIDS isn't a death sentence like it used to be. When Ms. Yuko learns that student A wants attention from his mother, she laughs out of realization and regret, similar to when Walter White laughed in the crawl space. She cries learning that a son who wanted attention from his mother took her daughter to get it. A part of her may feel that if she would have gave him more attention, she could have saved him. Miss Yuko learns of the bomb plot that student A put on his website, which is about to go underway at a student assembly meeting with him giving a speech before blowing the explosive. After his speech of how precious life is, he whispers to himself, just kidding, and blows the bomb, but it doesn't explode. The bomb has been taken by Miss Yuko, who calls him, saying that she took his bomb. She rubs in his face how he's been abandoned by his mother. Why did these girls have to die for the mother who is no good for you? He embarrasses himself during the student assembly, running from his crime and lies. Then, Miss Yuko tells him that she met his mother, and his mother never forgot about her son. But, Miss Yuko also left the bomb he made under his mother's desk where she works. So when he detonated it, he actually killed his mom. Just hearing this makes him have a nosebleed. He has a vision where he rewinds the explosion, seeing her grisly demise. Miss Yuko has made this boy hate his life. She walks to him during his tantrum, saying that her revenge is now complete. Yet, with it now complete, she joins with him, no longer divided, telling him that his reformation begins one step at a time. But as the film cuts to black, she says, just kidding signifying that Miss Yuko doesn't care about him reforming and wants him to hate his life forever. That is one of the most enjoyable films that I've seen in a long while. Let's talk about some themes here. Of course, student A and B and their crimes remind me of the crime that took James Bulger from this earth by two 10 year olds led away from a shopping center when his mother wasn't looking. Not to mention that this happened on February 12th, which is one day before Manami was killed in this movie. That case also started debates about how to handle young offenders. I was surprised to see Miss Yuko say, just kidding, at the end. Truthfully, it does bring conflicted feelings inside me. We are so used to seeing adults get revenged. I'm not used to seeing evil teenagers lose all their chances too. It makes me wonder what the author of the original book feels about justice. But it's clear that the penal code law might need a little tweaking because otherwise all the lonely sad teenagers would get off scot-free from their bouts of wanting attention. Motherhood was a big theme in this film. Hell, I think Student B's mom and Miss Yuko even have the same name, Yuko. Reminded me of how Batman and Superman mom have the same name. Many times in this film, parents and students blame Miss Yuko for not focusing on them as much as she focused on her daughter. It's really annoying how teachers are given so much responsibility, yet aren't compensated as such. And then everything is their fault when students fail. 
Even larger was the demonstration of isolation that was ever so present. I felt more loneliness in this film than in Requiem for a Dream. Loneliness is usually a topic in Japanese films. You genuinely could feel how isolated some characters were, and I applaud how systematic the film was in approaching that theme. I liked this film a lot. The second half kind of dropped me out of it. I personally get a little bored seeing the points of views of teenagers for too long, but the twist bought me right back in. The most disturbing moment is either the truth behind Manami's death or the death of student A's mother and how he caused it. Don't mess with Miss Yuko. This woman is the personification of revenge is a dish best served cold. Psychopaths beware. Most enjoyable moment was the ending. I actually assumed that Miss Yuko cared about reforming student A, yet her just kidding gave me a lot of unexpected feelings I'm still trying to untangle. I enjoyed the twist overall. You need to watch this video called Bedeviled, aka Boknam Rises, about a mother who wishes to escape a socially regressive island and away from her abusive husband. Also, check out Carve, the Slit Mouth Woman, a movie all about motherhood and loneliness in a whole different way than this one. And don't even get me started on Brutal, Confessions of a Homicide Investigator, a manga series showing a Japanese investigator who rids Japan of society's worst people. You're in for a treat with these. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to see more Spooky Rice. Thanks for watching. Spooky out.